Universal Audio has finally made an interface, or rather interfaces, that are deliberately compatible with iOS. And I say deliberately because it's featured in its marketing material, and it looks as though it was considered from day one for iOS compatibility. And for that reason, this is great news. These are called the Universal Audio Vault Interfaces, and they are comprised of different desktop interfaces, all of which I believe can be bus powered by the USB-C port on the iPad. But for lightning devices, you'll probably need to use the CCK adapter as well as maybe DC power on the back of the interface. Now, first of all, we've got the Vault 1, which is a one in, two out interface, and it's going to cost $139. The Vault 2, which is a two in, two out interface, and it'll cost $189. And where things start to get really interesting is the Volt 176, which is a one in, two out for $249. Volt 276, which is a two in, two out for $299. And the Volt 476, which is a four in, four out for $369. And all these interfaces offer a vintage mic preamp mode with modeled mic line input circuitry from the UA610. And while that's great that all of them have that, the 76 models also have a analog 76 style compressor included with presets for voice guitar as well as other sources. So that is a very, very big deal. It also comes with some incredible software for desktop. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the best software bundle I've ever seen with an interface. It's kind of crazy how much you get with this. I think this is perfect for the desktop producer who's just getting started or just wanting to get into it. I think you get a really good deal on the software on the desktop side. However, on the iOS side, the software is really irrelevant. It's nothing that we can really do with that, but it is nice that they included that. And according to Mitch at Sweetwater, the preamps sound really good on it, so I'll take his word for it. Well, there are a number of great things about the Volt interfaces. First of all, they have extremely high quality preamps. And I will assume that the A to D conversion and D to A conversion on this is probably good enough, right? The Moto 2 M2 has proved that you can get a lot done for a little bit of money. So I don't really think we need to question the capability of A to D or D to A conversion anymore at this point because things seem to just work. But let's get into some of the things that I'm a little bit skeptical about in regards to this. So far, I have not seen any specs on dynamic range or the preamp gain. And that's a little concerning to me, I'm not gonna lie. But this did just get announced, I wanna say yesterday. So let's give it time, see what they come with. But I'm a little concerned about it being able to drive some dynamic microphones and I'm sure for condensers it'll be fine, but my concern is really for dynamic microphones so that people who do podcasts or videos in general who use dynamic mics, which is a big thing on YouTube, you see the SM7Bs everywhere, and to a lesser extent, the Electro Voice RE20, which is what I'm using right now. So hopefully the gain on that is good because the gain on the ID14 Mark II was incredibly disappointing for an iOS device. It really did not drive the dynamic mic the way I thought it should and would. However, I know on desktop you get an extra 10 dB of digital gain that they call it. I don't think that's really applicable on iOS, unfortunately. So yeah, I don't want another case of that with this interface. So hopefully this does better, but I'm sure the preamps will be fine. I'm sure the A to D will be fine. It's just a matter of gain. My issue is really this after seeing the onboard effects done correctly with the much 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 more expensive apogee desktop i'm personally tired of the one button gimmicks whether it's the focus right air button the ssl 4k button or the vintage button here or for the 76 series on this interface the compression button what do these things even mean? Seriously, I was hoping we'd be able to dial in our compression settings directly on the interface. Charge a little more, remove the MIDI in and MIDI out, give us the real compressor that we can control. That's what I think we really need, even if it costs a little bit more for those features. Do 
a 476 Super Edition. Maybe it costs $499, $599, but it gives us a real deal hardware compressor built in instead of just a few presets. And that's my fear and worry about this interface and what it really means overall. I really thought we were going in a direction due to Apogee where iOS was now being considered as a truly pro platform. They incorporated the iOS ecosystem into their flagship interface. And I was hoping we could have gotten the same from all of the major players, including Universal Audio. So hopefully this is them just starting the process with their interfaces and eventually the UAD stuff will somehow get adopted in the future to be iOS compatible also. That would be a seismic shift in what I think we really need to see from Universal Audio. A lot of big brands, historic brands such as SSL are coming with these budget interfaces and while they're good on the surface, I think we're finding over time that they're nothing in common with their super high-end class of stuff. And the only company I've seen so far really nail this on the high end is Apogee. So hopefully Universal Audio chooses to not just give us the budget interface entry level for iOS, but actually treats iOS as a respectable platform, it, just as relevant as desktop in a lot of ways, where, hey, we want to have a high-end interface with uh, compression or the UAD plugins. Hopefully they give us that in the not so far future. But for those of you who are interested in getting a interface at this point, it looks interesting. I'll say that it looks interesting. I don't know if you should be jumping out the window for it. I guess time will tell when we do preamp tests and all that kind of stuff, if it is actually a super great value. But honestly, anything sub $400, whether it's the Black Lion Audio, whether it's the Motu M2 or the ID14 Mark II, with the exception of for dynamic mics with that interface, you really can't go wrong. So I think everyone's winning here. I just wanna see Universal Audio carry on tradition like they did with the UAD interfaces for iOS users. Give us that high end, give us that plug-in DSP package and some form factor that works on iOS. But overall, shout out to Universal Audio for at least finally giving us an iOS compatible interface. What do you think? Will you be grabbing one of the Vault interfaces? What interface are you currently using? Is this a step in the right direction or is this a bit of a regressive step where we're kind of going backwards and iOS is on the budget side of things, but not on the high end side of things. I want to know your thoughts. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section. And with that said, I'm about to get out of here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales, beats, reviews, updates, and more. And be sure to check out some of the best kits available for iOS at iPadBeatMaking.com. It's iPadBeatMaking.com. Peace.